But hopefully everything can be heard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, fine. I'm starting then. Nick just said we can hear and see y'all. Perfect. Okay. Who's who's we? He's got someone else over there. Is we the mouse, him and the mouse in his pocket? The chat, obviously. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get started then. Hi, welcome to Rise of Tiamat. This is a 5th edition uh, module that takes place 100 years before the fancy new Dungeons & Dragons movie. So crazy how I got a plug in that movie. Crazy. Hey. <laughs> They mentioned Cult of the Dragon, and I'm like, that's my game. Mm -hmm. I'm famous. It's not like anyone else it, plays this game. It me. It's me. I'm the problem. So, <laughs> welcome to Rise of Tiamat. This is a 5th uh, edition module published by Wizards of the Coast. Here is my fancy book. But uh, the things that we're doing tonight are not technically in this book. Uh, everything that I'm doing is now out of the Fizzbins book. And look at all of these bookmarks that I have for tonight. Oh my gosh. I am very, very excited for this. And I, I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> so, so that we can get right into it and uh, start freshly traumatizing all of you. Uh, do we have any announcements? Jermite, you got any announcements that we're supposed to be doing? All our plugs is down below. That works perfectly for me. Yeah, yes. all of our plugs are down below. Oh, Same I got a good. fancy... Hold on. Stare at this a second. Look at that. My dad writes books. There's a nice image that I made for it that hopefully is showing up on screen. And you should go check them out. They're all on Amazon. You should also leave him a review because he likes to read the reviews. So there you go. That's awesome. Uh, I believe Divine and Conquer is doing a live show at this bar that I don't have any of the information for, but I'm sure it's going to be mentioned in another game. So you should tune into the next uh, Divine and Conquer stream to find out more information on that. Because yeah. if, uh, if for housekeeping's sake, since you ha if you have not noticed, uh, we don't have a Jesus tonight. So I'm going to be running this stream out of my tiny little two bedroom apartment. Here we go. Let's hope it works. <laughs> stream don't fail me now. So hopefully everything runs as smoothly as it is able, because I really want to play this game tonight. Sure. Who are you raspberrying at? Don't do that. I'm just raspberrying just for the sake of raspberrying. Oh, wow. she's already in Patience's character. Also be nice. Oh, be nice, please. Do that. Only one person would dare be nice raspberry. Yes, be nice. Also, be I have a quick question. Yeah. What's up? Uh, what is Jar Jar Binks' favorite oh. soup? What? What is what? it? Miso soup. I was going to ask Since if it's Miso is not here, uh, Jeremiah, get out. <laughs> get out of my oh, house. He, he, heard, he heard I did that last Wednesday. <laughs> oh, I perfect. Like, I'll, I'll do it again. <laughs> perfect. Okay. All right. So with that, Painfully out of the way. <laughs> Remove mm. the blade of that pun because it was so sharp. Let's do introductions. Hi, I'm Vic. I'm going to be your DM for the evening, as well as a lot of awful creatures that Hawk might know the name of. Mm. Because they That's were his awful. neighbors. That's awful. <laughs> and in the other room, uh, hey, Tabby, who are you playing tonight? <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Tabitha. I'm playing Patience slash Rosemary, the tiefling sorcerer slash ranger. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jeremiah, who are you playing tonight? I am playing Cordelia Chattington, Ooh. the Medusa fighter rogue. I just lost my mouse and I don't That's know where it. it went. I already said my pun. I'm good. You're good. Okay, fantastic. I lost my mouse and I'm very scared. <laughs> hey, uh, Lynn, who are you playing tonight? I am playing Father Larkspur, the tiefling cleric of Inmeter. Inmeter. Okay. Oh my god, what is happening? 
Hold on one sec. I might have to fuck things up. Okay, I found it. Fantastic. And last but not least, hey, Sydney, who are you playing tonight? I am playing Nicodemus Hawkins, human fighter. <clears throat> My hometown is... Oh. Because I called Tiamat a bitch. That does happen. Sorry. <sighs> okay. We don't have an intro, so we're going to just go right into it. So, unless anybody needs like a quick bathroom break, then I can quickly pause this. Do refill drinks or whatnot. Intro. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. I, I, perfect. Perfect. Rawr. You're doing it. There you go. God, that's beautiful. Character, character montage. I was truly immersed. <laughs> All right. In that right. case, let me get my recap music on. So that way we're not all sitting in awkward silence as I retell these very traumatizing events. All right. So, as our story continues, Tarsius, Cordelia, Patience, Hawk, and Larkspur, you have all arrived in the countryside of Termish with the urgent mission of finding Zonthal Tower. You had been given a note, uh, sequestered out of a den of red wizards, that... Uh, was written by a wizard named Iskander, who is looking to quickly and safely leave this tower in hopes that whatever it is that they're doing within its walls does not happen to him. And the prize that he is offering for you all is that of the Blue Dragon Mask, the final piece in the puzzle to bringing Tiamat into the Forgotten Realms to more or less lay waste to all life as we know it. So... Uh, when you first arrived in Termish, you encountered a band of cult members, as well as the infamous blue dragon, uh, Lenanthon. You had heard rumors of this dragon uh, basically running amok throughout the countrysides and claiming different territories for his own, one of them being uh, an area in Termish. So you encountered these cultists, you encountered Lenanthon as they were in the midst of moving supplies, as well as people. You captured two cultists uh, out of the group for interrogation. One you managed to save, while the other unfortunately perished under a curse placed upon them by the Archduchess Cesariel. And it was through your one remaining cultist's confession through the priest Larkspur that Larkspur was able to learn some secrets of Zonthal's tower. Larkspur also, uh, within that same day, met a fellow priest, but this one from the Church of Lathander within his hometown of Ober. So Larkspur decided to uh, give him a good Ober greeting and strangled him to death and hid his body in the woods. But he did manage to uh, pick a letter off of the body of the priest, a letter that is from the High Dawn Lord. Uh, Eve Gross, to, that is addressed to Severin Siljarin, who is the leader, the current leader of the Cult of the Dragon. While all that was going on, Patience, uh, you sought answers from a book of forbidden devil knowledge and unknowingly made contact with one of your fungals from the Nine Hells. Paperwork Yay. still pending. Uh, afterwards, once you were ready, you ventured out in search of answers toward the towards finding the hidden wizard tower and on your journey out you were led to the den of the blue dragon lenanthon who also just so happened to be the dwarven ranger that not only was dating hawk's sister but also agreed to help you find said dragon lair <laughs> after uh, a very uh, uncomfortable conversation you fought the dragon Killed him five times over, and it was in his dying breath that Lenanthon revealed to Hawk that when they had first met in the Termitian Wilds, he wasn't taking away Hawk's family and friends. He was returning them from the tower. And with, as the party deliberated what should be done about whether they should go to the tower first or backtrack into Binatuan, they finally decided that it would be best to backtrack, to check on everyone to make sure nothing crazy was happening. But it was unfortunately on that final day of travel that you saw smoke in the distance towards Binatuan. And when you 
crested that final hill, Hawk was met with the image of his hometown burning away, while draconic monstrosities ran rampant, as well as smaller, shambling human forms also. So, with that, we are going to go back to right where we left off. So, Hawk, as you are standing on that hilltop with your party, oh goodness, you're very loud. You see familiar buildings, like buildings that you can pick out in the distance and know who lives in those homes or who runs that business and what they do. You watch as it's just all burning away, and you see these f monstrous figures moving through the town's streets. What is everybody doing? How away are we from the town? So if you run, you're going to be there in probably, like, the next five minutes. Like, you, if you gun it in... You're close enough that you can kind of see a layout of what's going on. There is a lot of it that's still obscured by, by the black smoke of the fire, though. What you did see, you saw these monstrous forms tearing people apart. And in the opposite direction, you also saw Miss Una kind of ushering people into her brothel. Because you can see the brothel just towards the edge of town. Unfortunately, Hawk, you can't see your house from here. It's too obscured by the smoke. Oh, you're muted, you said. You're muted. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask which, like, where did we come in from? Okay. So let me pull up the map. Don't be deceived, it's much more fiery in real life. Yeah, don't be deceived, it is a lot more on fire. All of this is on fire. All of it is on fire. So you went southeast, is what you did. Okay, so, so we're coming back from here. Oh, that's, don't move the map. Where were you pointing? This? Yes, that's where I was going okay. to move you. Okay. So you'd be coming in from there. So you're closest to the lucky you right now. And you know that if you continue upwards, like if you continue upwards this way, you're gonna get to, uh, you're gonna get to your house as well. Ooh. But you still have to go through town technically to get there. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> uh, since Hawk knows that. Una was also in that chest. And that if what old boy said was true, Una may or may not good anymore. So if they're right next to the lucky you, the first thing he's... If he's seeing people fleeing in there, he's going to go and make sure that that is, in fact, a safe place for them to be. Okay. Uh, yes, patience. She is immediately going to reach out and slap a hand on uh, Hawk's uh, forearm and she's going to cast Fly. Ooh. Wow. And she is going to hold concentration for it. For the whole Big time. Bird. Big Bird. You only have to... I can only hold this for ten minutes. Okay, bye. But it, but, okay, yeah. <laughs> Go on ahead and make sure everyone's okay. We'll catch up. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a dumbass. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, he's gonna. <laughs> yeah, he's still gonna fly. It doesn't mm -hmm. mention me. I can concentrate on it, but it doesn't mention that Hawk has to be in range. She will just keep content concentration on the spell. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, it'll still be the brothel first. Um. <clears throat> And make sure that everything there is kosher. Well, I mean, it's a brothel, but, like, 
as kosher as right um but yeah so that would be stop number one all right so hawk you're going to uh the brothel yes uh what is everyone else doing else go first. I am concentrating. Jeremiah's muted. Oh. Yeah, he got a little pixely for me, so I couldn't tell. Nope. Oh. Oh, it's my internet. Oh. Yeah, internet's fun. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, my internet is not... So you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes. Hello. <laughs> uh, my first thought was to go to the brothel, since everybody's going there to evacuate, basically. That's okay. my intention, is to have protection there. Okay. To help people to be there, basically. Right. DM, do we see any of like, the figures heading, uh, that are not look deformed heading towards the brothel at all? That's a very good question. I want everyone to roll me a perception. Okay. Hawk 2? Mm-hmm. Okay. Everybody. Oh, shit. We Since you're all... Nat 20. Nat 20? Okay. 26 total. Okay. okay. Uh, that's an 18. Okay. Good, good. Nine. 19. 19. Excellent. Very nice. 16. 16. Okay. So, you all passed. That's fantastic. Let me make sure I have the big boy sheet up because Tarsius is there, T posing in the background. <laughs> oh. Ooh, let me uh, pull up my T mount. All right. Oh, right to you. So, you all passed, which is fantastic. So, as you guys are pretty much uh, making your way downhill, uh, Hawk ascending more so, as he has been slapped with a fly. You have fly speed of 60 feet, by the way. Zooming. What? You're zooming. Yeah. So, as you're all basically making your way into town, and you take one last, like, per uh, precursory look towards Binatuan just to see what and all is happening for the most part it looks like they're mainly concentrated in around um, the more like I forgot my words they're they're more in the town is what it is uh, okay. they don't seem keen on chasing people like pursuing out of town they it looks like they're mostly congregating in the more like crowded areas of this town um, the smaller, more humanoid figures that kind of shamble are definitely only seem to be like congregating where people are falling. And there's another thing that you notice as you guys are making your way down. And that is, you're not quite sure if it was, you know, the lights of the fires playing, because it's, it's, these fires are very bright, but you're not sure if it's the fire playing trick on you, but... Uh, you could have sworn, Cordelia, since you rolled a natural 20, that some of the clothing on the people that are running through town look red. Hmm. But everybody saw this or what? Yeah, you, or everyone pretty much saw it, but you're, you feel more so that you for sure saw it. Like, everybody saw it, but it's kind of like, was that the light? Was it... It could just be someone just wearing red, but you saw a very distinct red color through that throughout the, the panicking masses. Uh, I guess I will... While we're kind of running through down, is everybody trying to go to the brothel? Yes, I believe the plan is everybody's going to the brothel first. Okay, then yeah. while we're running down, then yes, I will kind of mention, like, 
Did y'all notice that everybody's... A lot of the people are wearing red. Now that you confirmed what I just saw. It's a big word for Elmo. <laughs> you don't think they're red wizards, do you? Um, when patients say that, I'm basically like immediately my my posture difference to more battle ready than than speed just to make sure <laughs> but looks like maybe maybe they're can, going to attack me. yes can patients still see hawk i mean oh, sh he's I hard to miss <laughs> i had to do another thing uh sorry uh, i rolled a nine on my wild magic uh, when she casts black. Okay, yeah, uh, he's... He's going to point at him and send a message just saying uh, Cordelia saw what might be red wizards in town. Be careful, because I don't want you to be a target uh... for spells, if that is the case. Okay, God Hawk damn it! Oh, no! Potted plant? Uh, Potted me. plant. Potted plant. Oh my god. Potted really? plant. Potted oh, plant. Potted plant. Get my page open. Potted plant. Potted plant. So as you all are making Put your way down, patience uh, kind of points towards the uh, flying himbo in the sky and <laughs> conveys her message. Uh, to which... Um, wait, is that one that... I can respond to or no. It's a 47 DM. 47? Yes. So, as you all are making your way down, uh, down the hill at a hurried pace, uh, Hawk can also, can Hawk respond to that message? That is a good question. It's message, so it's one way, I believe. It's oh, a one let way. Me let me double check. All right, so... Hawk in his own brain is like, I'm already a fucking target. Look, you can reply to it, yes. Oh, you can. Cool. Yes. Uh, he'd be, uh, he'd respond and be like, uh, well, fate is just across the sea. It's not sending, so you can just, I mean, yeah, like the first. That makes sense. Yeah, the like once you're done saying what you're saying, then that's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, fate is just across the sea, uh, so that makes sense. Uh, I'm already a target, so I can be one more. And I'm kind of hard to miss, so that is what it is. But thank you. Alright. So, as you guys are making your way to, uh, making your way down to the brothel patients, you sling your spell up, and you feel the reverb of wild magic, uh, kind of spark off again. And as you are making your way down, you hear the accompaniment of cloven hooves next to you. As, uh, Steve has returned. Oh, I did the thing again! <laughs> Summon the unicorn again. Yeah, and his name is Steve. Steve! So it just kind of like looks confused. And you just hear a voice in your head. This ain't the fucking Feywild. I'm so sorry, and my wild magic did the thingy again. God damn um, it, you again? <laughs> what is it with little girls and fucking unicorns? Look, I, didn't, I can't control when you show up and when you don't. I don't mean to summon you because she's arguing with this unicorn against we're running. Okay, and as you make it down, the minute passes and he just disappears mid-argument. Okay. It's always about virgins, this purity, then it... <laughs> and he's gone. Poof, he's gone. <laughs> and he's back in the Feywild, like, wow. Right in the middle of my argument. Right in the right middle, middle of my of argument. <laughs> Takes his hooves and does All this. Right. <laughs> Let's get a, get you into the brothel. As you don't see anybody at the front doors uh, when you make your way to it. So I'm going to put you inside. And I actually have a map today. Ooh. Lovely. So as a you tweet. go... A tweet. <laughs> and as Hawk, you, since you are the first one to land and you throw open the door and you walk through, you are immediately met with like four spearheads facing right at you. Oh, shit. Hey. <laughs> Oh, which you're not in here, so I need to get you in there. 
Hey, ho, uh, here we go. Copy. And we get to the brothel, is no one else is trying to get in? Like, by the time you guys in. get to the brothel, you don't see anybody else at the doors or like trying to get in. Okay. So okay. as you, I'm gonna put Hawk right there. So you guys are all squeezing in. So you are all met by like spearheads immediately pointed at you. And Hawk, you see the town guard um, literally like at the ready, ready to like, you know, gut you the moment you walk in. Yeah, he'd like, like screech tires. Uh, I breaks. thought he was actually screeching. No, he doesn't make that noise. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, he'd be like, whoa, no, it's me. It's me. I live, lived here. Uh, not here to hurt anybody. Here to make sure people are okay. gonna put this on for now for background it might sound a little too merry but that's where we're at okay so hello just making sure the right audio is playing okay so as uh they kind of they still hold their spears up at you And I'll have you, uh, have all of you roll me an insight. Cool. Beans. We're not good at that. Nah, 12. That, wow. 12. Nice. 22. 22. Okay. Cordelia, what did we get? Oh, you were muted. 24. Very nice. Uh, Lark, what did we get? 18. 18? Fifteen. Fifteen. I heard. I only heard the teen. Okay. So, uh, I'll say for everybody that got a, like you know, fifteen up. Uh, these guys look spooked. Like they are scared out of their minds. And Cordelia, since you know, again, you rolled the highest. You see that they have this, and you and you've seen it before in people too, lately. Uh, that they have this haunted look in their eyes that they have seen something that just should not be seen as they are all pointing their spears at you and you can see that like their hands are trembling as they do so as the main as the one in the uh i'll say the guy that's right in front of hawk as he's just like mm -hmm. just, just back up we don't we don't know it's if you're one of them yeah it's why cordelia's eyes are probably the same anyway <laughs> yeah haunted <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh we're we're friends of his sister. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and who's that? Like, Hawk is literally gonna be like oh, no. <laughs> As you will as you kind of look and you see that the tavern is like there's, there's like uh, a lot of people that you recognize within this tavern, Hawk. Um, you see Bernard the Butcher uh, over here. You see his son as well, uh, you, who you have not really met because he's about the age. He's like 10 and you left 10 years ago. So by the time you were leaving, he already had a kid. You see... Um... Hi, sir. Hello, hello, champ. And you, you will see the guards kind of like know. attending to everybody, making sure that they're okay. Uh, kind of like field dressing wounds like very simply for people that got hurt uh, and you see Una you see uh, Pavel and then you see Mrs. Bobbins and you also see uh, Mrs. Bobbins cats on the counter as well as Helene's oh, pet uh, cat Patches as the cats are all comfortably loafing in, in their environment as Una just kind of like looks up from talking to uh, her husband and just immediately rushes to you, Hawk. And she like, shoves the guy, get out of my way. And just shoves him out of the way. And she goes and she just like is dusting you off and like checking on you. And she just like motions down for you to, to get on her level. 
Come here. Okay, and she grabs your face and she starts like like getting the schmutz off it. <laughs> it's like, where have y'all been? We it has we been went... hell in a handbasket out here. We we went to to look for the wizard, and we were looking for that big blue dragon. It's causing all those problems. Turns out, uh, he doesn't give a shit about these soldiers. Uh, turns out. Uh, that Nenth, uh, Helene's little boyfriend, uh, was Lenenthan, the dragon. He led us to his lair and tried to kill us. With dead. Uh, that's where we were. And he told us that something bad was happening here, so we came back here, and I thought he was lying, but he was lying. Um... Uh, he's gonna look at take a like, breath. He told us some things. He told us that he's gonna like kind of whisper to him. He told us that he wasn't taking you and Lane and used to. He said he was bringing you back. Uh, yes, patience. Patience wants to cast detect magic in the and brothel just hold it. yes okay yeah. all right and cordelia what's up uh i just wanna once the guards are kind of yeah they'll stand down once una like shoves them aside yeah, that, and like yeah that was that was the word i was looking for stand down once they kind of stand down a little bit i'm gonna immediately go to the nearest window and just be a lookout to the front door sure. if anybody else is trying to get in and stuff okay so I'll just stay here. It's just Tarsus, the window, right? like, oh, do we need to be barricading? Let me go find some furniture. <laughs> yes, patience. Also, because I feel bad that I cannot never remember his freaking name, is the hobgoblin friend there? Oh, you mean uh, the half orc? Eustace. Eustace. Yes, actually, Sorry. he's right here. Okay. She is looking at, with the detect magic, she is looking at Una, and then she's looking directly at Eustace. Okay, well, you you cast detect magic, and you say it's a is is it a thirty foot radius or? Yes. Okay. And I rolled my wild magic, and I rolled a six. He's just out of range. Oh, well, then she'll move over there. <laughs> Fine, if he's out of range, I'll go beans next to him. Okay. Well, I mean, she'll you look at Una, and she is just blooming with magic, obviously. And. It's yeah, it's like eye by eye. It, I mean, it. If you look at it and you feel it, and you get that that um kind of like that static sensation that you get when your magic uh starts to go into the wild magic territory because she is wild magic. I guess she's mainly looking to see if she sees anything off aside from just the wild magic. Does she notice any draconic magic? You're gonna have to roll me an arcana for that. Holy shit. Okay, let's see what my arc I'm proficient. Wait, 21. 21. So technically no. It's it's one of those things where as a sorcerer, you kind of more or less have a feeling of magic instead of just it's it's difficult to tell them apart. A wizard for sure would be able to discern them. Like the, the, a wizard would just like alphabetize, categorize all that, have a whole Venn diagram for the different types of magic. But as a sorcerer, it it works a little bit more differently for you, because it it goes a little bit more off of instinct. But with how Una is just oozing wild magic, it's it's too it's too random. It's hard to pick that off for you. Then looking over to Eustace. Alright, so you go over to Eustace and you kind of squint at him. And for sure, yes, there is there is a little bit of, like, an aura of magic to him. Can't you tell if it's draconic? I'm gonna say, yeah. Technically, yes. <laughs> it's draconic, but also there's... It, it's because you've 
you've felt draconic magic before. You've worked with draconic magic. Your surrogate mother is a dragon. And you get that that faint uh, that faint vibe of dragon magic, but it's also at the same time you're like, but is it? It feels like it, but it doesn't feel like it at the same time. If that makes sense, it, it you, you have to second guess yourself on it. Yes. Does it? Because again, detect magic lets me at least know the school of magic too. Mm -hmm. Can she tell if it's transmutation magic more so? Yes, you can actually. Yeah, she's just gonna look over at Una first and just be like, do you feel off at all? Well, I didn't get a chance to put my hair in curls, so I feel like my whole day is thrown. But I'm just fine. I'm more worried she... about everybody else. How does Eustace look? Eustace... He looks, uh, you're gonna have to roll me an insight. And what is, uh, Huck, what are we doing? And Larkspur, what are we doing while this is going on? Sorry, sorry. 17. Okay. Uh, Hawk would be kind of, like, gave, you know, the quick, the quick, dirty, like, recap of, this is what was happening. They said they brought you back. They said that this is what's going on. A little concerned. <laughs> I'm a little concerned, too, because um, also... I don't know if you know this, but I'm a fey creature. I'm a magical That's creature. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fey creature, so you know, the idea here is that, you know, they did something to charm us, but see, charms don't really work on me like that. What about draconic magic? I mean, I haven't really... Well, okay, I can't say that I haven't dabbled in draconic magic. That's my ex-husband on the wall over there. She points to the to the <laughs> green dragon head. It got uh, complicated. Have... <laughs> <laughs> let let the fawn land egg. Oh, stop! No. Happy opposition <laughs> season. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, Hawk would be like, okay, uh, so, then I'm most worried about Eustace, then, and have you seen my family? Any of them? I haven't. I Everything. The cat. <sighs> the, the cat just the showed cat up. From? The cat showed up. Of course up. it. Of course it. She, okay. she came running in, like, early yesterday morning. Great. Uh, Great. Uh, Hawk is gonna like look at Miss Bolt Bolts Bolts. Yes, Bolts Bobbins, one of them. Um, you be like, hi, Miss Bolts. Uh. She's gonna. She, she'll kind of like put a hand on her chest when she sees you, and she also is gonna come rushing over as as fairly quickly for what looks to be an older woman. As she's gonna kind of like you know do the same thing Una did. She's gonna check you over, make sure you're okay. You know the whole you know matronly feel. Yeah, very. I, yeah. Um. Have you seen my family? Yes. Any of? Them? Where? I saw. Okay. I saw your mother yesterday. She was leaving work, and that's when this all happened. And we... Okay. And she's gonna basically tell you, um... I lost my page. I found oh, it. Oh no! I found it. Your mother was leaving work yesterday. And that's when we saw Mrs. Uh, we saw Mrs. Beatrice. You you remember her? She's and she kind of like lowers her tone as she looks over her shoulder. Bernard's wife. She was walking their boy back home, and she just stopped and let out the most awful scream I've ever heard in all of my years. And then she just 
started to change. She... She just started to change, and then soon she wasn't Beatrice anymore. She was something else entirely. She had wings and horns, and I don't think the human form is meant to twist in the way that it did. I just feel sorry for her boy. He hasn't said a word since he and his father got here. That That is a very heavy trauma. Uh... But, but I, I I pulled her back into the shop uh, when I noticed some unsavory figures start showing up. Mm -hmm. And we stayed there until Helene uh, came around the back and took your mother home. Fox running out the door. Oh, okay. Alright, so Hawk runs because, out the door. Because now we believe everything we've been told. Okay. And that is bad. Okay. That's fair. Cool. Alright, so... Right now, uh, before before that, so Larkspur, was there anything that you were doing uh, in the moment? While this conversation was being had? He's just kind of standing there observing everything. He's relatively calm. Okay. And just kind of leaning against his staff. Alright. Someone has to be. Yeah. I wouldn't say he's the emotional support cleric, but... No. He just he just watches as Hawk runs out the door and just... Mm. Alright. So Hawk runs com right out the door. What are the rest of you doing? Patience is walking up to Eustace. Okay. What are we doing, Patience? <laughs> Mr. Eustace? When I see... Oh. Yes. So, uh, what would you say, Patience? Mr. Eustace, how do you feel? Eh? No, I feel and fine. And she's getting close to just looking at him. I feel fit as a fiddle. Did she any get anything from that 17 insight? Oh, that's right. You did roll insight. You know, he looks fine. Honestly, like, you're looking up and down. He looks like the spry, you know, cantankerous, you know, half-orc that you've met before. Mm. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, you're probably too young for this, but... There comes a time in your life when you get old enough that you start to get this thing called shingles. <laughs> it burns like the dickens. <laughs> Asking if your body hurts. And again, it, it's transmutation magic. Like, she still has it to is. magic back. It is. It is transmutation magic. Mm-hmm. It most definitely is. Uh, so, Cordelia, what were you doing? Oh, uh, no. As soon as I see... Uh... Oh. Uh, was it a run out of the door? Yes. And then, I will... I was just like, ah, uh, um, um... <laughs> okay. Like it will take uh, her uh, uh. five... Probably like this. Uh, having a having, uh, a, uh, um, having a Tina Belcher moment. He, he, he needs backup. And then, <laughs> he, he needs he needs some kind of backup. He needs backup. Uh, we'll be back. And, then, and she will run after. All right. And so he you're needs also... professional I mean, help. There's probably there's probably a village worth of red wizards outside. <laughs> so okay. So you do that, <laughs> and then Tarsius hears you, and he's just like, ah, ah, ah. Where do I? Where do I go? I don't, hmm. Huh. He's going to just be there indecisive for the minute. <laughs> Alright, so. 
Hawk runs outside. Cordelia runs outside. Patience, as you are asking uh, Mr. Eustace if he's okay. Yes, Patience, that is a cat. Hearing what she heard earlier and with everything else, she is very trust no bitch at the moment. That okay. includes the cat. Okay, don't trust the cat. Got it. <laughs> All right. As uh, Miss Una just kind of, as uh, as Hawk runs out, uh, Una is just like, "Well, all right, I guess let's just make sure everybody's okay." And she's gonna just start kind of going around, fussing to everybody, making sure they have like a nice warm drink, making sure they've got like their shock blankets and all that. Patient is gonna trot up to Una, and does she have like a cloak or anything that she's wearing that she can kind of tug on? Oh, she's wearing her, um, she's wearing her day robe. Yeah, she'll just tug on her robe, just like... Yes, like, dear. Cool. Mr. Eustace has, uh, transmutation magic on him. Honey, it's rude to stare. Okay, but with the things that I know, and what we know, that's very concerning because... Gestures outside! Yes, I know. Just let make you just let the adults take care of it now. She's gonna just no, pet your head. She's just. She's gonna oh stop no! Her. Do not treat me like that. <laughs> just because I I'm adult. nine, I have seen a lot. Well, you don't need to shout. I'll respect you as a person as long as you act like a person in my home. You understand? Miss Mom. <laughs> I ain't one of your little friends. <laughs> you just see her kind of like just stand up a little bit straighter just like, you know, as much as like a child, you know, is trying to kind of keep it together. Point is I'm very worried about Mr. Eustace. Because that's draconic transmutation magic that is on him. And that is the same type of stuff that is making people turn. Right. Okay. Now, what are we supposed to do about that, then? I don't know, but... Let's say Larkspur, uh, roll me a perception. Or roll me an insight, actually, as Patience is having this little fuss with uh, Una. 18. 18, okay. So as uh, as you're kind of listening to uh, Patience uh, argue with uh, the satyr, you watch as... Uh, Eustace kind of like takes a seat on his chair and there's a moment where you see that he kind of like rubs the spot where he indicated he had he felt the shingles so he just kind of like rubs like on his thighs for a minute just takes a breath and then he immediately collapses on the floor oh well and he starts to spasm and yeah Lark will walk over there okay as you go do that Sure. Yay, trauma! Yeah, I'm like, yay! Alright, so you go walk over to Eustace as he's just calmly walking as this man is seizing on the floor? Yes! Oh, of course, okay. Cool as a cucumber. As I'll, I'll say, well, as, you, uh, as you're doing that, you kind of notice in the back, uh, you see your uh, your new uh, converted dragonborn friend like towards the back being guarded by uh, two of the town's guards. Uh, his his hands are kind of bound right now, obviously, because he was not a good person before. But you you do see him like kind of like standing towards the back, as he's just kind of like looking around, very, very panicked. For the guy that's on the floor, uh, I want Lark to kind of assess the situation with uh, medicine, if possible. Sure. Yeah. Roll me medicine. He's good at that. Ooh, 26. Ooh, very nice. So you will, as you kind of like assess him, 
you see as uh, like his entire body is like tensing up, like his muscles are like locked and he's basically asphyxiating in the moment as um, he's trying to scream and like he screams so much that he just lost all his air and now he can't take a breath back in. And you also start to sense that his body is starting to like change in a way. Like, you see as uh, the skin on his arms is uh, becoming raised with, like, these hard bumps underneath it. And you see that his tusks are getting, like, longer and more fang-like as his eyes are also starting to change color as well. Um, Would he know what kind of magic this is? So from what you've heard from patients, uh, you know that this is a transmutation magic with kind of like a draconic twist on it. Hmm. I have nothing that can help that. Okay. Can I <laughs> Great. Try? Sure, you can Do try. What? You can certainly try. Patience is going to run up, and she is going to cast Dispel Magic at the highest possible level that she can do, which is 5th level. Okay. Roll me a uh, roll me a spell check for that. I need you to come here and witness this for yourself. I'm not getting up from this chair. I am connected with a wire. Okay. It was a natural 20. For your arcana? Yeah. So, 24. Okay. Alright, so... Let me roll something really quick. Okay. Uh, and you need to also roll me your wild magic. Oh, god damn. Well, what'd you get? Potted. I'm just happy it wasn't flipped, so... Uh, okay. What'd you get? Potted. Potted. So, Potted. what's your percentiles? Getting them. Give me a second. I should just keep these out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 91. Oh, yeah, well, that's very convenient. So. Oh. Okay, so. All right, here's what's going to happen. Coming out again. That would huh? be funny. All right, so here's what's going to happen. The unicorn coming out again. Oh my god, that'd be so funny. Be like, what? <laughs> so, unfortunately, with your dispel magic, you are not going to be able to stop this change. So, oh, you're going to watch as Eustace starts to grow in size. Uh, very, like, in, like 10, maybe 12 feet tall. And you watch as his body just kind of like reshapes into that of this large uh, draconian figure as like this massive like horn kind of like splits out from the middle of his face. You see as he turns into this large blue like draconian creature as it lays there uh, gasping for air after it finishes, you know, letting out all the screams that it can scrump. It's going to tie him up. Okay. You start time up. Get rope. Go for it. Yeah. Put you. I'm on the wrong layer. All right, go ahead. Start. Do me a do me a sleight of hand. See how well those knots work. Nineteen. Yeah. Nineteen. Excellent. You. That is some very proficient knot work. Hopefully, because he you're very. Is a criminal. Yeah. And of God, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hawk would be jealous. <laughs> Of Eustace. Uh huh. <laughs> so you tie him up, and for the moment, Eustace is not moving or saying anything, and it looks like he passed out completely. So you have this very large draconian creature laying on the ground that used to be Eustace. And as that is happening, you kind of watch, uh, you kind of notice as a couple of people kind of like groan in discomfort. And they uh, they kind of like double over, like all at once too. And they, I'm going to say this as nicely as possible, expel 
something from their bodies. As each one of them produces a ooze that just appears. No. And the oozes and the people kind of like slump to the ground completely like out. As these oozes are now kind of like free moving and writhing and looking for something to attack. So what is what is the current plan right now? As these guards are all on the offensive, they raise their swords and their spears and they're ready to attack as people are starting to kind of like move away in fright. Are the guards not doing anything? No, they're they're getting their weapons out immediately. Oh, okay. Like this this happens and they are getting their weapons. Guys, I think they're dead. <laughs> move over to the, this one right here and she is going to cast a chill touch okay roll me your attack on that oh hey by the way is uh does the cat look normal the cat is a cat it's fine okay just making Leave sure patches alone Leave the fu <laughs> look i know that cat has a bitch face but it's a cat I too have a cat with a bitch face, and I assure you, he just hit. looks like that. 18 to hit. Okay. To hit. That will hit, yes. Okay. That will most definitely hit. Cool. Tarsis is also getting his weapon out as he's <laughs> solid. This place. Hashtag. Let's see, so we go over here. We're going to take a hit. And I'm going to say that if you, because of the nature of this of this fight, if you can successfully hit it three times, then it's defeated. And I'm going to say that the guards are also going to be rolling to hit, too. Okay. So if that's, that is a hit for Tarsius, I'm going to roll for all the guards. That is also a hit. Pav is immediately climbing over the counter and hiding because he's like, I am a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> and All again, right. Una's fine. She's not. She's just looking around very confused. She's just like holding her nightgown. So, uh, Lark, what are we doing? He's going to stay by the unconscious dragon guy in case he wakes up. Okay. He's like, the guards have this. It's fine. Yeah, so the guards are all attacking. And eventually, I will say that this... Uh, y you will eventually vanquish the, the slimes. As they are fairly easy. And also very weak. So... As that kind of fright is over with, everybody just kind of in a panic now. As Una's just like, now settle down. Everyone settle down. We're okay. Our fine boys here got it. They're, they, they're doing their job. So. And I will say eventually, uh, after a, f a few moments, uh, the draconian that once was used is, starts to stir. And uh, how do you have him tied up, Lark? Exactly how do you expect? Hogtied? Yes. Alright, so he stirs, and you can see as he, like, tests the bindings and sees that he's tied up. And it's just like, what? The, what? G Gif, you don't get these ropes off me! Easy. As it sounds like Eustace. It doesn't look like Eustace anymore, but he sounds like Eustace. ask what happened to him. All I'm, all I'm saying is my blood sugar got a little low, so I just wasn't feeling good. You might want to look at your hands. I can't because you tied them. 
I, I mean, Hogtide, I would assume it would be in front of him. I always assumed Hogtide was, like, from the back. But I could be wrong. Somebody Google this. Uh, somebody tell me I'm wrong. No, it just muted. says it just says to secure by fastening together the hands and the feet. Yeah, so it could go yeah. either or, I think. Uh, yeah, don't uh, look at the images <laughs> for that. No, <laughs> you really googled that, huh? I did. Yeah. I didn't know, and I found out. <laughs> I love how we both at the same time image shirts. Okay, yeah. I did you write? Did you write that. not Shibari? Uh, no, it should have said not bondage, but then nothing would come up. <laughs> she just wrote like like I would have wrote like rodeo like, style, but that would have also bad. been really bad. There's, there is a there's lot no of leather. There's no safe. There's a lot of leather. <laughs> But yeah, I, I imagine it. his hands and feet are in front of him. He's like in the fetal position. Okay, all right. Thank you. That That's good clarification. Not sexual. I didn't say it was sexual. <laughs> the connotation just, was assumed. Google image says it's sexual. Google image it needs to go to church, obviously. Apparently so. All right. So Daddy, so Daddy Larkspur, uh, Hogtide, Eustace. Daddy. Front. My dog is I barking. Just... Yes. I'm sorry. You can't. No, what were you going to say? No, don't kill me. Why? That was the first thing that came up in my search. Oh, oh no. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Hawk wishes. <laughs> okay. So... He looks at his hands that are now in front of him, tied to his feet. And it's just like, he just kind of like blinks, but it's like the reptilian kind of blink. Mm, sideways blink. Sideways blink. That, 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 that ain't, that ain't, that, those, those, those ain't my hands. They're attached to you. I, this is, this. I forgot Lark has an accent. I, I, f I forgot Eustace's accent, so I'm just doing everyone. Because I think I did Australian. Australian. I, I think it was Australian yeah, at first, Australian. and then I forgot how to do an Australian accent, so we're going to just do Cranky Old Man. So that's what we're going to roll with, because like, the DM like, is not proficient yeah. in accents. Lay that sweet, sweet French accent so on us. Sweet, sweet French <laughs> accent. It's not as great as jean Pierre's, but it's close enough. It's just a, just a flavor. Oh my god. A flavor. Let me let me pause to yell at my dog real quick. I apologize. And now we're back. So anyway, so as he as as cranky old Eustace looks down at his hands, just what the what the goddamn is going on? Mm, you tell me. I, I, and you know, he's he's just very befuddled, and you know everything about him just seems like Eustace, but he's just very large and very scary looking now. So it for the seems most part, like your case of the shingles is actually you transforming. <laughs> um, he's gonna look up and he's gonna say, "Wait one moment." He's gonna leave him on the ground. Okay. Uh, he's going to walk over to the Dragonborn, the guy that's over here, that he talked to and yep. saved. Okay. And, uh, just... Alessand, yes. Um, be a friend. Um, can I bother you with some questions? He'll just kind of, like, look to you, and, like, as you, uh, as you approach him, he'll, like, his hands are bound, but he kind of just, like, goes a little, little high. Oh, Aww. good. And he'll he'll nod. Uh, he'll, uh, Lark will kind of look to the two guards and ask them to kind of go away. This is priest business. Uh, I don't think we're supposed to do that. He's. This is between me and the prisoner, and God. Uh, I okay, and he just they just kind of like look at each other. Uh, roll me persuasion or intimidation, whatever you're feeling. 
Do, 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 do. Uh, intimidation, he got a 18. Perfect, okay. It's just, I, and like, the, like, the guards kind of like, when you say between me, the prisoner, and God, they're like, oh god, okay. Uh, I don't remember the last time I went to church. Yeah, and they're gonna just like, back off. They're gonna go sit over by the bar. And just, good. Not really looking at you, but like, trying to like, peripheral, just make sure that everything's fine. Right. Um, he's gonna ask this guy if he can speak Infernal. And he nods. Okay, he'll he'll speak in Infernal then. Okay. Uh, can you Parlez-vous. tell me what's happening here? And he just kind of like looks at you, and he sh- kind of like gives a shrug. And then he'll point to his mouth, and when he opens his mouth, you'll see that he no longer has a tongue. Hmm. I see. Did the guards do this to you? And he'll shake his head no. Did you do this to you? And he shakes his head no. Whatever attacks this town do this to you? He'll think for a moment, and just kind of like, kind of. Can you write? He'll just, like, look kind of offended at you and just nod. <laughs> I'm sure if it would set off anything, like your friend with the, you know, poison. He'll just, like, kind of motion, like, nah. Uh, yeah, he'll do his normal bit and be like, oh, okay. In, let it go. Oh, he's taking his shirt off and Hawk's not there to yes. see it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Woof, whips it out. It's okay, Hawk is whips what out? Just mm-hmm. kidding. Uh, that poison ink you stole. So I didn't steal it. <laughs> you took it without asking. That's stealing. I picked it up off of the ground so it didn't get lost. <laughs> so, uh-huh. uh, where are you having him write on your arm or uh, whatever's available? Uh, so arm seems very uh, that way you can read it too. Yeah. So he will begin to write on your arm with your ink and say. Um, This has been, uh, the the plan is in motion for uh, the tower. Awesome. This, uh, I'm trying to think how he would word this. This was always Galvin's plan to try and push the boundaries of non-draconic life. They're trying to amass an army worthy to Tiamat. Soon, all that aren't like us will be like us. Um, he'll ask if the guy in here that transformed into a dragon, is he, is he under any, like, magic of their control or anything? Or is he just changed physically? He kind of, like, looks over your shoulder at him. Kind of went Benny there for a minute. Kind of, like, looks over your shoulder, like, yo. Uh, and he'll just, like, kind of, like, go back to riding on your arm and say he should be, but he doesn't seem to be. Interesting. Do you know uh, what is going to happen to you? If I'm found... killed. And if you are not found? I hope that I'm not found. Do you know what the guards are going to do with you? He'll just kind of like look look at the guards and he's going to shrug at you. And just probably writes, if they think I'm worthy of trial, perhaps I'll just simply, you know, be incarcerated. And what would you do if you were let go? (sighs) 
So he thinks for a moment. I don't know. Would you go into hiding? He'll not. Or would you try to stop it? Or would you try to stop it? He'll, he'll, he'll actually think for a moment on that. And he'll write, I want to help. Clark will nod, and he will walk over to these dudes. Okay. I'm we, taking him. Uh, we weren't listening. What? I'm taking him. Uh, can you do... Can he? And he looks over at his friend. Can you do that? Is that like a... Uh, like a... Like a... Re like a religious immunity? Is that a thing? Yes. I am taking him under my custody. Oh, okay. I guess, I guess he can... I mean, I don't know. I can't... We don't... What are we supposed to do? We can't find the captain. The captain? They're part-time without managers. They don't know what they're doing. I, I, okay. And they just kind of like shrug at each other like, yeah, I, I guess that's okay. He's a priest. Uh, Lark, Lark priest. is going to give them. Okay. Uh, he's, yeah, he's a priest. Priests are good people. Yeah, it makes sense. He's going to. Let me see if I can find it. Do, do, do. Should we make a donation to a city like that? <laughs> he's going to give them 500 gold. Okay. And say that this is his bail. And this will expunge everything that he's done. And he's now in my custody. That's a lot of money. <laughs> they're just like, they're holding it. Like they're like, they're holding the money that you gave, gave them. And they're just like, how? I, I, I mean, I didn't count, but this looks like a lot. So I'm going to assume this is. If your captain comes after him or any guards come after him, I will come after you. Do you understand? Yes, yes, Mr. Priest, sir. Thank you. And he'll, he'll like, clap his, his hand on one of their shoulders, and uh, he just kind of gives a little bit of a bow and says, uh, uh, May il meter bless the rest of your life. And then he'll just kind of nod. And, like, the, the guards will kind of, like, put the money aside. They're going to shout into the, the rest of the guards. They're going to be like, hey, guys, um, that, that dude's cool now. So let's just, we're going to let him go. And then one of the guards at the door is just like, God damn it, Jackson. <laughs> you can't just do that. It's like, you're not in charge. You have to wait for the captain. Well, you're not captain either. Well, I'm... And they just start arguing. But Great. It's fine. Hey, Vic. Yes. A distraction. Why I... Gren is missing. Gren is perfectly fine. Okay. Gren, Gren is on the bar with the cats, probably. Probably. He's trying to get on the bar. <laughs> he's he's wheezing, trying to like pull he's himself doing, up on a bar stool. He's doing the fat raccoon dance where they're trying to jump on something. <laughs> Waiting for someone to notice him and give him uppies. Yep, pretty much. No, no. Oh, yeah. There he is. No, no. No, 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 no. You don't eat the cats. <laughs> don't eat the cats. Okay, so what are we doing now? Okay, so you freed your friend, uh, Larkspur. Is, uh, mm hmm as he would have told you beforehand, before he lost his tongue, uh, his name was Olithand. So, Olithand Cyanrath. All right. <laughs> so, what is? What Silently are we doing? Laughing at it. <laughs> uh, he's basically just gonna have this guy as a charge. All right. Patient's probably grabbing Gren and going up to Larkspur, and it's just like, did we go and catch up with the others? Sure. Alright, so you're taking your buddy Olithand, you've got Patience, Tarsius has been kind of like half-jogging near the door. Just like, I don't know what to do. Uh, for, uh, Cordelia forgot, with a little panic of, like, I need to catch up to hawk immediately she's like stuck. she forgot to say yeah. watch the watch the kid <laughs> oh yeah so watch he's just like uh, it's fine. <laughs> all right hawk so. immediately was like what what promised to keep her safe what happened 
I okay. don't know. Uh, who knows? Okay, so uh, with that, I will ask Cordelia and Hawk, which direction were you taking to get to Hawk's house? The most direct one. So you're going to have to skirt through town. Because he lives like, yeah. Because you're going to have to take the main road up north to get to your house, which means you're going to have to go near the mess. Um, would Hawk know a way around that? You technically would, yes. It would just take you a little bit longer. Yeah, uh, I will. When when we're running, I, I will immediately, like, try to use all my movements, basically, to, uh, like, you know, as a rogue and all that stuff. Try to keep up, catch up immediately, uh, because I will immediately say, well, like, we, I know you're worried, but, or for something, but I don't really know what happened, but we need to at least be safe about this. So as you were running, you suddenly hear Cordelia right next to you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, he's going to stop for a second and like, okay, big guy thinks. It's really hard for our brain. We're not very good at it. We're panicking thanks. right now. Yeah. Full panic. Uh, yeah, he's going to look at Cordelia and he's going to look at the shit show. And he's going to look back at Cordelia and be like, this way. And he's going to take off in the direction that it's going to be a little longer, but that <clears> would <throat> avoid the wreck. Okay. <laughs> so avoiding the wreck. Uh, I will kind of whispering with uh, Hawk to it's basically asking for directions because what C Cordelia with what's this with the amount of time that we've spent together fighting and journeying and stuff uh, Cordelia knows that Hawk is not the sneakiest <laughs> of us all so he want she wants to kind of be reconning ahead and then and then call you like okay it's safe kind of like that okay and then it was like okay now which way now like are we going that way or that way kind of like that so hawk roll me survival cordelia roll me stealth where are alina's and i'm gonna have uh larkspur or patience roll me a survival to see if you can pick up on their trail as you guys are heading out 22. Very nice. Oh, that's funny. I rolled a 10, so 22. Huh. <laughs> and you just... You, you, you scuff your foot a little too loudly. You're like, damn. Shit. <laughs> did, did you want either one of us or both of us to roll? Uh, one of you is fine. With, with, with whichever one of you has survival trained, go ahead and roll that. I do have survival trained. I just didn't know if Larkspur also had it trained. No. No. Okay. okay. You roll survival then. His patience gets on all Dirty fours 20. and sniffs the ground. Dirty 20. <laughs> As she does just that. <laughs> gets on all fours, sniffs the ground. Did you bring Grin with you? Yes. Yes, yes she did. Grin came with because if she left Grin, he would probably try to eat the cats. Fair. All right. There we go. Mrs. Bolts would not appreciate that. No. All right. So Thanks we're going to put you guys out over yonder. And then you threes are right here. As Who's uh, three? These threes. Use three. Use threes. Anyway, so as patients, you kind of like get down to kind of like see if you can figure out where the, you, you know they're heading towards Hawk's house. And mm -hmm. you kind of like the first thing you notice on the ground is you're going to see I mean, Hawk obviously leaves Hawk. some very sizable <laughs> footprints. You know what they say about big feet. <laughs> yeah, they have big, big footprints. Shoes. They have big <laughs> shoes. <laughs> big boots. <laughs> Look. Look. Dirty. And you see, like, maybe a half a scuff that might be potentially the size of Cordelia's foot. Potentially. You're not sure yet. It could have just been, like, the wind or something, but... Something oh, was there. Must have been the wind. I know. Well, there's an arrow in your head. <laughs> <laughs> so you get you you kind of like uh, figure out the direction they're going, and you start heading also in that direction. Is it is the dragonborn 
coming with? Too, yes, no? yes. Uh, okay. Larkspur's new friend. Uh, okay, so Larkspur's new friend, uh, Alisand, is going to be joining y'all as well. Larkspur just creating new friends. He has so many friends, Along and I love way. that they're all dragonborns too. <laughs> he, right. <laughs> I, think, I know, I'm like, I think Lark has a type. <laughs> Damn. Um. Oh. Uh oh. Yes. What's the uh oh? Nothing. Worry about yourself. Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to change the music. Can I also state, I love how the one um, priest of uh, Lathander is still on the map because it's Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> let me, let me, let me get rid of him. <laughs> Bye. He's probably not there anymore. So. I know. So you guys will eventually kind of catch up in time. Like you will, you you kind of like hurry and kind of hustle yourselves in a way that you start to see them a bit of the ways in the distance. And I'll say Cordelia with you backtracking, like going forward and then backtracking. You see uh, Patience, Larkspur, uh, Tarsius, and a new uh, Draconic friend following. As you will recognize him as the uh, former cultist, uh, Alithand. Also, would you have cut his uh, bonds, uh, Larkspur, or is he still tied? Yeah, he would have. Okay, cool. All right, so he's just he's wearing like his his the armor that y'all found him in, so that's the only armor he's got right now. <laughs> so, so you guys will eventually meet up, and you are just a little ways away from where uh, Hawk's uh, home would be. as you and as you guys kind of like take to the outskirts you notice that a lot of the fire is mainly contained within the populated parts of town as you find your way uh, towards the road up to hawk's house you'll see that there isn't really any like fire or you know any kind of uh chaos kind of following to the outskirts and if y'all want to you can roll me a nature as Everybody. you guys are making your way up. Yeah. And I, just to assume, would y'all have caught up uh, Hawk and Cordelia and what happened in the tavern? Yes. Okay. Definitely. So Eustace is now a big blue guy. And everybody kind of uh, ejected some uh, oozes. Gross. Um, first question. Yes. Are the oozes being taken care of? Oh, we're going to ask them. They were taken care of, are, and... Are the villagers okay? Taurus is like, yeah, they were, yeah. like, really weak. You, you kind of slap them once, and they all kind of, like, melted. One second. There's a what in the tavern? <laughs> There's a blue Eust dragon? <laughs> Eustace turned into one of the... He transformed. Olathan just nots. But, but he... Like uh, is he alive? He's alive and he still sounds like himself. Oh, thank you. Thumbs up. Yeah, she's just Wait. like I, I tried. To, I tried to dispel the magic, but I couldn't. Okay. And uh, third, what is he doing here? <laughs> she waves. <laughs> I don't know. Ask him. Ask Mister Un Unbound. Hawk, like, it's Olisand, right? He nods. Olisand, can I call you Ollie? That's a mouthful. He nods very enthusiastically. Okay. <laughs> Ollie. It's little dragon tail <clears throat> wags behind him when you do that. He's, like, very stoked <laughs> that he has a nickname yes, now. Yes, please call me Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he does not have a tongue. Oh. He I'm sorry. He I, opens his mouth to once show I, you. <laughs> once I study a little harder, if uh, he wants, I can regenerate it for him. Oh, nice. Uh, if you want. <laughs> nice. He gives you a hug, um, Lark. Aw. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
<laughs> I was like, ugh. Lark, Lark just stands there uh. and he just has his arms down like, ugh. <laughs> You're really good at attracting the golden retrievers. <laughs> but he is uh, free. I uh, paid many of his um, fees that would require him to, you know, be let go. Can he be so he is with us. Good. Um, well, we can trust him as much as anyone else in this town. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome to the team, Ollie. Uh, do you need a weapon? He'll shake his head no. <laughs> and okay. he'll like hold his hands. Uh, he'll kind of like hold a hand out, and you watch in like this spectral kind of magic as a sword appears in his hand. Badass. And then it disappears. Okay. Because he's an eldritch knight. <laughs> I was like, yay, Eldritch Knight! Yay! My, my, my other favorite fighter class. Yeah, it's a fun uh, class. Yeah. You never lose a weapon. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Tarsh is like, so, so what is, what's the plan? Uh, I'm going to find family. <laughs> it's, it's a really good plan, yeah. <laughs> uh, if everybody is here. Uh, <laughs> yep, everybody's um, here. Good, good. Did Lark get full constitution for his poison? Or yeah, is he roll, good? Roll, roll, me a, roll me a constitution with advantage. It wasn't a lot. Okay. I forgot about his thing. Well, that's not good. Oh. That's better. <laughs> yeah, 16. Okay, you're you're pretty good. You, your arm feels a little like like a little high, numb. A little numb, a little hivesy, but you're fine. You make your way up the road towards your family house. And let me get you guys there. As what was everybody's um what nature. Was, yeah, what was everybody's nature? I got a fifteen. Okay. Sixteen. Alright. Uh Larkstar, what do we get? Uh, get on there. So Oh. Oh that's oh. oh shit. So you make your way up the road. And the first thing, and I'll say with your nature checks, you make your way up. The fires haven't reached here yet, but as you're walking, you look around and it looks like all of the life in the the local flora have just been sapped out as the trees are withering and the leaves, you know, yellow and starting to dry out. You see as the grass is ashy and crumbling and as you're walking your way up you don't hear a single insect nor animal of any kind and there are nobody visible and you make your way up the hill and you see your house and you don't see anybody outside but what you do see um, first to note the Hawkins home is not burning but it looks to be in a state of disrepair. You, it looks like the garden had been hastily dug up and torn apart. The uh, the family wagon that would be used for taking day trips and carrying, you know, Hiram smithing works have been has been upturned and destroyed in the middle of the field. Um, meanwhile, uh, where the smith, uh, the kind of the table where uh, Hiram would keep his tools, while it's uh, neat and organized. Uh, usually it's neat and organized, but this time it is turned over, uh, and there looks to be tools scattered all across, uh, all across the lawn, and there's also patches of blood in the grass. Okay, let me... Okie dokie. Alright. I got your message, Lynn. You have a good night. Okay. Make sure I am. Um... All right. Yeah, so just a heads up, Lynn had to check out for the night since it is 10.30 her time. So Larkspur will be quiet and heal if anyone needs it. All right. 
that is the first thing you see when you come across your house, Hawk. You'll also see that the front door is ajar. Running to the house. Run to, to the, the house, house very fast. Okay. What is everybody else doing? Patience is going to be behind Hawk because it's like... Okay. Kind of very... Kind of concerned, but... Because in right. the distance with like the fire burning and stuff like that, she's very... Mm, with everything. Alright, so... Hawk runs to the house. Patience, you're right on his heels. Cordelia, what are we doing? Same with me. Okay, so Probably everybody... Alright, so everybody is going towards the house. Tarsis is right behind you. Uh, let me get Mr. Ollie on here as well. Patience probably look to grin and just set him down right outside the door like behind like where the hinge is at and just be like I don't want you going in here just sit right here and wait okay he's very upset you told him that where is Ollie there's Ollie Safe. Gren sits by the door. If you see someone who runs out that looks If you mean. see something, say something. Uh, yeah. If you see something, say something. Yeah. But at the same time, if you see somebody run out that looks, you know, mean, you're more than welcome to bite their ankle starts wagging his tail when you say that. <laughs> Great violence. Tarsius is like, I'll, 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 I'll stand watch at the door. I'll, I'll be, he'll, he'll be in the doorway, just between the, the, the threshold, just making sure everything's okay in the house while he's also watching outside. And you're the last line of defense. <laughs> and as Lark sees blood, he is going to also kind of walk into the house, but only when anybody else does it first, so. Yep. Uh, like, if the door is ajar, Hawk, like, if there's really a thing of blood there, Hawk all but rips that door off the fucking hinges and runs okay. into the house. Okay. Like, so, in the house, Mark we're looking for be... people. Patience would be. Ollie's right here. Tarsus will be in the doorway. So, alright, you enter the house. And it looks like it's it looks like everybody just kind of like picked up and left. Like dinner is still on the table. And the only thing that you notice is the um the pat like the splotches of blood on the carpet leading to the door that once used to be your uh, childhood bedroom hawk. And you kind of look around and it looks like there's like a, there was a bit of a scuffle. Things are still in place, and as you're kind of like looking around, the first thing that catches your eye is that vase of flowers still sitting by the door to the bedroom, and the colors on it just feel so. They feel like an assault on the eyes with how vibrant they are in this in the dreary light of this house. As you just. For your eyes are caught by these blossoms of bright blues and reds and whites and greens. And like Tiamat colors. As it's just sitting in that vase tied up with a nice black ribbon. And a thought comes to you. It's in your own voice. And it's like the message was made clear with this with this bouquet sitting there. A gift from me to you. As you're all in this house, I need everybody to roll me a perception. I have an 18. Okay, good. 
Ah, fuck yeah. Uh, 22. 22, very nice. Love that robe of eyes. What do we get, Patience? Dirty 20. Dirty 20, okay. So as you're, Hawk, as you're standing there, you'll hear it first since you rolled very high. As you're standing there staring at this bouquet of flowers, you hear a noise behind the bedroom door. Uh, this bedroom door. And it sounds like muffled sobbing. Running. And, okay. Running. Flinging door open. You fling the door open and your mother immediately screams. As you see her tucked in a corner. Let me get them on the screen. Yeah, come here. As you will see them tucked in a corner. The far corner. As Helene is like hugging your mother. Like hugging y'all's mother. And in the other hand... Uh, she has the um, blet words. I lost my page <laughs> again. Okay, you see. Okay, so you see your mother like, like literally like backing herself farther into the corner as Helene's holding her with one arm, and you throw that door open, and she immediately raises her other arm, which has the uh, the cross peen hammer that is used at your father's forge, and you see a bit of blood on the flat of the head. As she looks spooked. It, once again, whoa. <laughs> As your mom just starts just crying immediately when she sees you. And Helene, like, slowly, like, low, she just kind of, like, drops the hammer and she just, like, holds her mother in both arms. And she's trying to hush her. It's just like, it's okay. It's okay. Nico's here. He's going to help us. It's okay. I. Hmm. Nico, what's happening? I am only kind of sure that I know. Uh, that I do know that it's my fault. Is uh, she's Helene just kind of her her brows just kind of like knit together and she's like what what are what are you talking about? Uh, it, just Hawk so you know, going... your dad is nowhere to be found. You don't see him. Of course he's not. Um, he's gonna sit there and be like, first of all, where's dad? Helene takes a breath. I... I was bringing Mom back from town when this happened, and he just... He's, he's been sleeping a lot since you left. His... He was complaining that, like, his hernia was upset, and so he's just been laying down a lot, and then yesterday when I was bringing Mom back, he came out of the house and attacked us. I was able to kind of lock him in the in the spare room. Was the door to that room open like it is on the map or no? Uh no, it was closed. Okay. Okay. Did he seem physically different? I don't I, I it was so fast I don't think so. He just Okay. I don't know. There was just uh, something in his eyes. I've never seen Dad like that. Like I, he he gets angry, and I know what he gets like when he's, you know. But yeah, I think he was trying to kill us. And when she says that, her voice hitches. I don't think he would ever want to do that. I okay. Looking at Helene and Sorella are. Either of them bleeding. Roll me a... Are you just giving them a glance? Or are you going to check them over? Uh, glance. Roll me perception. Better? Okay. Uh... Let's... It's a 16. 16, okay. So... 
for the moment they look they look physically fine uh helene's got a couple bruises here and there but it looks like she you know from what she said about having a tussle with your your dad that that pretty much tracks but other than that they look just very shaken okay um he's gonna take a breath uh And just to make sure, because he does have the robo eyes on him, like, there's no one, nothing else in the house, no invisible people, no nothing like that. Not that you've seen. Okay. But I'll say with your uh, 16, uh, you start to hear movement in the other room. The sound of footsteps getting up, like getting up off the floor and walking around. Um, Hawk's gonna look at Helene and be like, "The blood everywhere." Dad? Yeah, Dad. I, I, I hit, I hit him. And she just kind of like gets very upset when she says that. Like, it's, it's okay. You, you don't, you don't. I, I. Um, he was, he was trying to grab mom, and I got very scared and. I grabbed the That's hammer okay. and I hit him with it and I hit him on the head and it kind of cut a gash, but I think the rest of the blood is from him throwing up. Throwing up? Yeah. Great. <sighs> um, Hawk's going to look back at Patience and Cordelia since they were both at the tavern. And Lark, I guess, everybody that was still at the tavern. Uh, not Cordelia then, Patience, and be like, there may or may not be an ooze in that other Okay. Um, Mr. Hawk, can I do a thing really quick? Uh, yes. DM, I'm going to be right back. Sure. Okay. So, Cordelia and Patience, what are we doing? Patience? To move up next to Hawk and peek in. And she... I'm assuming 10 minutes have passed since she had last cast Detective Magic. Yes. We're... She's going to cast it again. I'm going to say... Yeah, since you took the long way, yes, 10 minutes would have passed. Okay. So she's going to cast it again. Okay. Okay, that was an 18, so I did not trigger wild magic. All right. You don't sense any magic in this room. Yeah. She's looking at Helene. Okay. And... Helene, nothing. Sorella, nothing. They, you just see two very scared women clinging to each other and tucked in a corner. Sorry, Sorry. you cut out. I know Sid stepped away, but... Yeah. Uh, Cordelia, what are we doing? Oh, my idea is to go over here. Because the, the doors are closed, right? All yes, that door is closed. Room. Yes. Then I will just stand by waiting for for a hawk to say the word to breach inside. Okay. You and won't... I do want to hold something. Hold a spell. Okay. Uh it's a it's a innate spell that okay. I have uh called suggestion. Oh. All right. And my suggestion is basically to Stop attacking us if it's the dad, kind of like that. Sure. Okay. Uh, roll me a perception. He's still trying to do it. Roll me a perception. But I'm not. I'm not opening the door. Right. But roll me a perception mm -hmm. since you're next yeah. to the door. Yeah. Not one. <laughs> so Natural like a one. Twenty-three. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. That's a, uh, if it's total, that's a seven. Okay. I mean, you're just close enough that you 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 hear the same foot. You hear like footprints, kind of like footsteps uh, of somebody walking in that room. And as you step by, were you were you trying to stealth as you were stepping by the door? Yeah. I okay. Would. All right. Just roll roll me a stealth then. Oh, I rolled the same. I rolled a ten, so oh. twenty two. So twenty two. All right. So. <laughs> You uh, step by the door, and you just hear him uh, pace. You hear you hear something pacing around in there, and it sounds like two set two just two feet, one two, 
that kind of footsteps as it seems a little sluggish almost and then you hear the door uh the 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 knob to the door turn but you also hear the lock as he's starting to like turn the doorknob and as as it doesn't turn and open he starts to shake the door and you hear the slurred sounds of his of Hiram's voice Hiram Hawkins as you just hear him go Sorella open the goddamn door let me out when that happens I will quietly do this too um you know you know like you put your foot in front of the door and yeah. it's so hard to open it from the other side just go like that just stopping the door and putting my weight on there too to help it not open but yeah i'll try to do that until all right we're ready to go in there okay just so you know tab i sent you a quick message yeah no i got it all right oh hi you want to say something so as you are all kind of poised to see what happens next. As Elaine is going to start to uh, get her mom up, just like help her out. She's like, it's okay. It's okay. He's not He's not going to hurt us. We lock the door. You have the key. It's fine. And she's going to kind of like walk her mom out and uh, kind of like sit her down in the chair out here. And just kind of like make sure she's okay. As Sorella is just trying to hold back another cry, obviously. So. Well, I don't know if they've seen me. No, they. Without... Oh, we've they seen me without a hood on or anything like that. Uh, since I'm trying to hold this spell. You know, if you if you were wearing your hood when you first met them, then no, they've never seen you like that. Yeah, uh, I've always have my hood up so but for me to cast this spell i need to have my snakes out okay so you you pull your hood down as sorella sits down and she looks like she's about to start again like she's like she's one and like helene's just like it's okay it's okay you're okay mom <laughs> but yeah the fine. snakes are kind of going she's going like that <laughs> she's a friend she's a friend of nico's it's okay I've, you know, it, it's, I, I've, I've met her when they saved me from the trunk. Remember, I told you that, uh, that I woke up in a, in a trunk and Nico and his friends, they all saved me. And everything was fine. It's okay. And Sorella just starts, you know, not crying very loudly, but just like very like shaken up. She's just crying to herself. Why is this happening? Why is this happening to us? Uh, you should exactly wait. What'd you say, Patience? Patience is just like, perhaps we should relocate and uh, evacuate. That's a big word for Elmo. It's a big word for Elmo. You're learning some big words today. All right, so, uh, Sydney, I don't know how much you heard. Um, okay, so Helene, uh, pulled, uh, your, uh, your mom out and kind of sat her down and was trying to calm her down. Uh, she saw Cordelia, she's never seen Cordelia without her hood, so she was starting to panic, thinking that Cordelia was one of the, uh, attacking people. And Cordelia is poised by the door, ready for your go-ahead to open the door if you plan on opening that door. But you hear your father pacing around in the room and he tried the knob he shook it uh, angrily when it was locked and you hear him yelling for your mom to open the door so he's yelling open the goddamn door it fucking hurts we really do that with your parent with your sister and your mother in here As you hear the sound of him, like, now shaking the door. Like, very angrily. Uh, um. Cordelia will kind of 
not speak it super loudly, but also there's he's she's next to the door with him right there by the door. But I will look at her um, patience to say or like I have something prepared for it for him to possibly not attack if it works. Okay. Okay. You then hear the sound of what sounds like him slamming his body into the door. No. Very aggressively. I'm this tiny little girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> talk to me like... Uh, it, give me a second. He's gonna walk Tarsius yeah. and whisper to Tarsius. Cow ear up. <laughs> Um, he's gonna, I don't see us, but if what we were told is true, you, you cut sister. out, you cut, you cut out okay. right there. He's going to be like, I don't think I can leave my mom alone with my sister. It's not Tarsus, it's just like, okay, what do you want to do? Uh, Hawk's like, I'm going to have him come stand outside and just the chair with my mom, like outside next to Gren. Okay. He's going to look at Gren and be like, that's not going to be helpful, but we'll, that'll be fine. Leave him alone. He's gonna. You try. look down at Gren, and he's yes. like trying to eat some of the leaves. And Tarsus is like, "No, I told you not to eat the leaves. <laughs> it's not good for you." Talk to me like as terrifying as you are. I think she might still be afraid of you. Um. And yeah, Hawk will come back in and like to his mother directly. He actually isn't going to address Helene. Okay. He's just going to address his mom and be like, come outside. And he's going to, like, take his mom's hands, come outside. What's, where, where, where are we going? I don't want you to be in here when we open that door. I can't go out there. You're not. Do you know what? There's nothing. Do you know what's happening out, out there? And, like, she has this look in her eyes that's just... She's frightened. Probably a little better than you do. I watched. Um, I, saw, I saw. I saw Beatrice. I watched her as she changed. Hawk. Hawk, look, Beatrice was a bitch anyway. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I, she just. She just kept screaming. She I just, know. 